Thanks for tuning in. In this episode, we visit White Pocket, Arizona. This is a stop before we make our way over to Alstrom Point and then Moab, Utah, where we do the Fins and Things Trail. I recommend you subscribe now. You don't want to miss these future episodes. Congratulations to Don Izzy and Devin Catherine for winning the $150 prizes during my YouTube 10K giveaway. I appreciate all the support over the years. It truly means a lot to me. I mean, I I could never have imagined that I would be this person making these YouTube videos, having an audience. All the support has culminated to getting on a Honda podcast. I share the episode with the girls from the Honda Rebel Rally team. How cool is that? A link to the podcast will be in the video description below. Now, let's get over to this trip over to White Pocket, because this is not a filler episode. This is a cool place. White Pocket sits on top of the Vermilion Cliffs. It's tucked away in a little secret spot. It's far off the highways. You enter from the west, so it's just a choice between southwest or northwest as your entry point. It's 25 miles, but the terrain could get a little sandy or muddy, which could be really bad. We looked at when we did this trail. There was a recent storm and the terrain was a little damp. This trail gets really sandy from what I hear and it could bog down tires. Uh, people say that you just need to keep up your momentum during the sandy part. Now right here, as you can tell, the road is a bit washboarded. Airing down smooths out the ride, makes it more comfortable, and there's less stress on my suspension parts. That's why I air down. Totally different ways from here, but I remember this part. Okay, hang on. Uh, don't, don't go yet until, uh, hang on for me, okay? Let me see which route I'm taking. So there's trespassing uh, over on this. Uh, don't follow uh, me, don't follow me. Shortly after that little facility, the road gets sandy. So you can see here that the sand is actually a little damp and that helped us get through this quite easily. When you go, expect really soft and fine sand. I hear people getting stuck out here because of this sand. Just a warning. In front of me is a stock Toyota 4Runner TRD Pro, and it makes easy work of these little tiny rocky sections. These rocky sections might give lower ground clearance vehicles a tougher time. I'm talking more about like car, all wheel drive cars. We had a stock uh, Subaru Forester with 8.7 inches of ground clearance, and it wasn't an issue whatsoever. This is the part where you're gonna have to worry. You could imagine how deep and sandy this part would be if it was more dry. The drive is beautiful, but if I showed you that, this entire episode would be really boring for y'all. So we're just kind of skipping towards the end. Unfortunately, that GoPro that you see at the bottom of the screen, well, the SD card malfunctioned when I was trying to transfer the files over to my laptop. So. Unfortunately, the footage is gone. Oh, in the side of the wall? Uh-huh. Little alcoves. I see, I see. It's official. It's official. We are at the White Pocket. How exciting. Woo, 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 woo! So here we are, the parking lot to the White Pocket, which is a big old playground for adults and kids I guess and dogs or whoever you bring and you know what that means it's time for Johnny Rawl and all-wheel driving in Western United States 
Here we have an influencer in the wild. In the wild. In the wild. <laughs> I'm wearing this special mask so no one can see me. He can't see me. I have a new name for this place. Godzilla's Ball Sack. After hiking in to White Pocket, us Overlander folk wanted to go out and explore to find our campsite for the night. Jack Luck Photo and his photographer friends stayed behind to take pictures. Wait, wait, how about we send, no, no, seriously, you got, you got the winch. Let's send Randy through. That's a way smarter idea, right? I like that idea. Go ahead, Alan. Extremely deep sand, eh? Too bad, it's downhill too. Yeah, that also means we need to come back up. Yeah. Well, so far, we haven't hit the deep sands. I think this might be the deep sand. Oh, there's a huge flat open spot right here. Dude, this is it. Dude, this is perfect. That wasn't that. So, they say deep Got sand. My level spot. They say deep sand, but I'm thinking they're talking about. John, what do you think? I think this is an amazing spot. We are home! We found our home, yes. Okay, it's time to set up. This is the trail swing. I actually picked it up, uh, the, the final product, yesterday. But you can see, it sits up nice and high. One hand operation. And it has an auto stop feature. You just gotta enable it so that you could, you could have it free swing or you could have it stop by itself. And because I'm on a actual uh, decline, because the, the vehicle isn't, uh, I guess it's slanted just a little bit, then I'm gonna engage the auto stop. And what that does is you could just grab this thing and swing it and it auto stops. Sandra found us. Shortcut. <laughs> Moving forward, all my episodes are going to have a message about leaving no trace. Please keep our public lands clean and keep them open. Leave no trace. What the heck? How did you find us? It's so dark, I can't see you. <laughs> <laughs>
Hey, how, you doing, how the heck did you find us? Hey, <laughs> hey, 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 wow, it's like you just I just figured it's so. Right oh, you go to the front because that chair, that chair, you have to sit on the front. I'm good right here. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go uh, crawl back in a bed, but we got a movie uh, movie night going on out here. You're like <laughs> right there. Hey Doing a bit of a morning hike. Uh, looks like there's a cave in the distance, so we're gonna go check it out. So let's go. If you march, sit, walking in sand isn't as bad. <laughs> it actually does work. It does. Pop quiz, gentlemen and lady. It's wood. What kitty cat? Oh, kitty kitty. Is that? Bobcat. Yeah, Bob kitty kitty. <laughs> so it looks like the rocks fall straight down. <laughs> so if I tip over right there, so you gotta be kind of like this far away to not die. <laughs> <laughs> like the monkey. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, my oh my god. That's too much. <laughs> <laughs> that would just like be terrible if he just got crushed right now. What the heck? <laughs> what the heck is this? What 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 what? That's it is pretty cool. What what? Yeah, it's a setup. It's a setup. It's a setup. Was that corn? Corn, yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's gotta be bird doing something. This actually is Maybe, secret, okay? What if the Native Americans yeah. put it here a long time ago and no one has touched it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we totally missed the petroglyphs. Oh, wow. That's freaking cool. Yes. That's fine. Yeah. Thank you. Fine. Mm. Found some petroglyphs. Interesting. And then we also find some idiot glyphs. <laughs> <laughs> That's idiot, yeah. So now it's about that time to end the trip. But first we have to drive out of here. Here's Nori in his Jeep Gladiator with a two and a half inch lift and 35 inch tires. He gets through no problem. Here's Daclac Photo in his Lexus GX 470. In other parts of the world, this is called a Land Cruiser Prado. Very capable vehicle, but even the most capable vehicles have to use momentum to get through deep sand sometimes. Come on, Huey, don't embarrass yourself on YouTube. <laughs> Dude, am I missing all the fun? Don't worry, we got three cameras on him. I'm gonna have to be like everybody else and watch it on YouTube. Oh, no! More momentum, don't dig holes! <laughs> Okay, everyone else, if you just use more momentum, you should make it up just fine. All you have to do is just get up that ramp. Maintain throttle. Main, uh, too slow, too slow, too slow. Back up. True. Back up. 
You'll need to go a little faster. How about sound for Too slow, too slow. Hey, get Sandra to do it. Cause Sandra has a similar vehicle and she can show you how it's done. Okay, a little more. You go faster, you have to accelerate more. Uh, that might make it, might make it. Nah, if you just went a little bit faster, a little bit faster, maybe, maybe like three miles an hour faster, he would have made it. It's, real, it's really hard to reverse in that thing. Really? Yeah, yep. I know, so he can't reverse out of that. And I speak from experience. Even on a hill like that? Yeah, I know, right? Because he's, the reverse crawl ratio is nine to one. Huh, okay. You know, his forward is 14 to one. So like they made reverse really, really kind of weak. The vehicle you see here is an SJ Subaru Forester XT. This vehicle ran from 2014 to 2018. It has a two liter turbo and a continuously variable transmission. Unfortunately, it could not back up. You guys could push. I, I couldn't get, uh, Just rock it. All right, okay. starting to move, it's starting to move. Awesome. Straighten out the wheel. Keep going, there you go. There you go. Yep, that's why it's, uh, you should never will alone, even if you don't have a second vehicle, just having extra hands like that could help you out of a situation like that. Oftentimes, in the heat of the moment, you just don't think of sensible things. These tires in this vehicle are not aired down. They're at highway PSI. Keep going. Go, go, go. Send it. Set. Keep going. All right. He, he should make it. He should. That was just enough speed. Oh, no. If you drive a CVT equipped vehicle through terrain like this, then you need all the help you could get. So air down your tires and make sure you don't wheel alone. I, yeah, I seriously would just keep, keep accelerating. Just keep matching that gas pedal until you uh, hit the apex. No, it's too slow, too slow, too slow. Start over, start over. Now that it's getting so dug up, I'm a little worried. Eh, you'll be, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. And remember that one trip to Capitol Reef and you guys were climbing that thing up so easy and I was struggling and you guys have, you don't have turbos and I do. And I'm like, what that, why am I having issues? That's why, that's why I, I you got to use some speed. Yeah, that's enough. All right, who's next? Is he doing two-wheel drive? No, I'm in four-wheel drive. Okay, four high? Yeah. Okay. I don't see it yet. I don't see an issue. It looks like Randy's taking no chances. He no gives problem. it a bit of gas and uses some momentum. Now it's Sandra's turn. She has a SH Forester 2.5, non-turbo. Uh, she'll, she's going to hit it. Go, go for it. You got this, Sandra. You got it. Look at that. Easy. I tell you, she knows how to drive. She really does know how to drive. Good stuff. <laughs> now to Toyota 4Runner TRD Pro. They're stuck. A slow send like this? Is a display I think he's of strength. Four low, huh? <laughs> is he four low? I'll take your offer. Easy. All right.
And here's another example. Don't wheel alone. Four low? That's what happened. See? She knows. But at least it can spin its tires, whereas the CVT right. could not. Yeah. Sounds pretty soft all through here. Yeah. There, there it is. There it is. There it is, Sandra. Nice. Very nice. Heck yeah. No problem. So that's all the time we have for this episode. Even though the trail to White Pocket isn't very technical, the soft sand can pose a challenge to some vehicles. And that's why I rate this trail as moderate, too hard for all-wheel drive. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, because next episode, we're going over to Alstrom Point, and then over to Moab, Utah to do the Fins and Things Trail. So stay tuned, subscribe, and I hope you have fun on your adventures.